the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, but am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye have believed. Verses 57 and 58 reads as follows, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, and, and our, yeah, our topic would be the right response to the resurrection. Amen. All right. That's the, right. the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is without a doubt the greatest event, the greatest miracle of human history. Amen. It describes the fact that the Son of the living God has been raised from the dead, and he's ascended into heaven, and he lives forevermore. So what should be our response as believers in light of this great truth? It's not only it's a historical fact, but it's also a biblical truth. That's right. So then what should be our proper response? Well, Apostle Paul gives us the response in verse 58 of First Corinthians 15. He said, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Even in the midst of suffering, be steadfast, unmovable, even if the challenge for your faith Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Right. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What is our response in light of all these facts? The resurrection of Jesus Christ occupies the very center of the earliest Christian proclamation. The resurrection is referred to more than 300 times in the New Testament verses where it guarantees the truth of major doctrines, doctrines as well as grounding our very own Christian practices today. I want to focus today on the relation between the greatest miracle being the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the committed Christian life being us okay. and how we would apply this truth. Yes. What sort of application follows from the truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ? In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul points out that since the resurrection really occurred, it grounds our motivation toward daily living. It should inspire us uh, to live righteous. It should inspire us to be mindful of the needs of others. Paul says, in spite of the, the knowledge, in, in light of this knowledge of this great truth, here we ought to be looking to do some work. That's right. So let's look at Paul's approach uh, in chapter 15, which is known by many to be a dissertation of the resurrection. He describes it in detail, and, and, and then he gives us the meaning to our response to our end. In light of all this, we ought to be steadfast. Amen. That's right. Unmovable. Unmovable. Always right. abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as we know that our work in the Lord That's right. is not in vain. When something is vain, it's meaningless. It's right. useless. But, but, but when it's in the Lord, it has meaning. And not only that, but it has eternal 
rewards and eternal implications. So look at Paul's approach. Start with verses 1 and 2 as he outlines this gospel message. In verses 1 and 2, as I read to you earlier, the gospel message Paul tells us was preached at Corinth. Paul says, I'm writing you about the message that I already told you in person. The gospel message was preached at Corinth, and when the message was accompanied by believing faith, the individual who believed was saved. The factual content of the gospel that it is written and presented in the book of Acts and also in the Paul's letters and epistles, that factual content is the fact that Paul writes about the deity, the divinity, yeah. the death, right. and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right. Saving faith is more than simply believing these facts were true. You see it right there that says, unless you have believed in vain in verse 2. It's not enough just to believe it, but saving faith requires trust in and commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ himself in light of all these truths. In other words, it requires us to come to a point of service where we are truly committed, not just to an idea, but to a Savior who is able to help us in our time of need. I mean, that's what saving faith is. We trust in Jesus. Yes. And if the gospel preached, you believe it, then if you believe something, your belief should be manifested in your actions. That's right. And Paul goes on in verses 3 and 4 to say that Paul received this gospel message from others, just like we have, and he passed it on. He received it from others, but he didn't keep it just to himself. As I talked about the last message with Lydia, she didn't keep it to herself. She passed it on to her household. We can't keep these that have been passed down from Reverend Walls and Reverend Buck and Reverend Wild and so many others. We just can't hold it to ourselves. We have an obligation to our Savior and to other people to pass this truth on to a next coming generation. So it was passed on. This report that Paul gave contained the message of Christ's death, his resurrection, and several key appearances to both uh, individual groups but also to individual people such as James. And Paul ends it in verse 8 by saying, he also even appeared unto me. All right. He said, we know that he lived because of the testimony of reliable witnesses. We know that he lived past the crucifixion. We know that he lived past the grave because we have reliable testimony from witnesses. He said, but he also appeared to James. He appeared to Peter. He appeared to the disciples. But Paul said, and I can tell you firsthand that he appeared also unto me. All right. You all remember his story on the master road as described in Acts chapter 9. And, and all the apostles, as you see in verse 11, were preaching the same message. All of the true preachers of Jesus Christ are still today preaching right. the same message. Right. Jesus Christ crucified, yeah. Yeah. buried, yeah. and risen from the grave on the third day. Yeah. The resurrection ensured Christian truth and our practices such as Christian preaching, All right. All right. I didn't say prosperity preaching. Right. I didn't All say right. good living right. preaching. Right. But right. Christian preaching, right. it also gives us a, a foundation for the forgiveness of sins and also for our own as believers, our own resurrection. Right. We have something we can stand on. Yeah. That's why we're not afraid to live or to die That's because right. for us to live is Christ and to die is gain. Right. Therefore, we have a firm foundation for our own eternal future. Jesus' resurrection becomes the foundation as well as the pattern for the believer's resurrection. And Paul goes on into that chapter to describe how we are sown uh, corruptible and risen incorruptible, how we are sown natural and raised spiritual. He goes on to talk about all that. I want to focus on just the resurrection today and how it applies to our own daily living. Okay. Right. So how do we ground our Christian beliefs in practice? How do we ground those things? To change us for the better. But first of all, the resurrection of Jesus Christ ensures not only the truth of the Christian faith and message, but it also allows believers to rest securely on that foundation. Grandma used to say you can put your foot on it. All right. And Jesus all right. is risen, and there's nothing the devil or anybody else can do about it. That's one foundation that is a sure right. foundation. Right. And this allows us to push onward to other areas 
of commitment. Now that we know that our working is meaningful, now that we know that our working uh, for the Lord will, will always uh, bear benefits, then we have a sure foundation to stand on and a true reason to demonstrate our commitment. But make no mistake about it, our commitment also needs to be to one another and also to our community right. and our right. government. But most of all, our commitment must be to Jesus Christ. He is the one. So that we can be forgiven. Yes. So, Pastor, how do we show our commitment? Well, just ask. Well, right. I, I will start with our commitment to service. All right, that's a good one. Now, now that's a round start. Yeah. In light of the truth of the resurrection, we should be genuinely concerned about the wills and the orphans. That's right. That's we're right. concerned about a lot of things today, but the Bible says that we ought to be concerned truly about the widows and the orphans. And let's watch it. I heard James say, true religion is this, that you take care of the widows and the orphans and keep yourself unspotted from the things of the world. Mm -hmm. we, we cannot be true Christians and not be concerned. Right. We're not upset or worried about a coronavirus for those of us who are saved. That's We're right. concerned about the ones who don't know Jesus. Right. We ought to be concerned about the widows and the orphans. We ought to be concerned about the poor and the needy. We ought to be concerned about the sick and the short in them. We ought to be concerned about those who do not know Jesus Christ yeah. as Lord and Savior. My daddy used to say, as the free part of all their sin. We ought to be concerned that they hear this message. Before it's everlasting, too late. So with this in mind, what better place of service can there be than in the church? That's right. That's right. I know That's right. so many people are looking in so many places for relief, for hope, for comfort. But if you're going to serve in commitment to the Lord, I'm not thankful. I can't think of a better place than in the church. That's right. After all, Peter did it right. Judgment starts well at the house of the Lord. Lord. And if the righteous cast them back in, what about the ungodly? Mm, mm. Don't give up on the church. That's Just right. because at this point in time, yeah. we're not meeting on a regular basis. That's but right. you can still pray. That's you right. can still call on the name That's of Jesus. Right. If Amen. you call him in faith, he'll still answer in power. You can still Amen. call and check on one another. You can still Amen. send up prayers for the city. You can still make your petition known to him yeah. that you're calling in faith. Yeah. You're answering power. Yeah. The yeah. church is a good place to start. This is not the first time that the church has gone through difficulties. Right. I've That's been right. reading a, a book about the early church and the little situation that we are dealing with in this present time in, in, in April 2020 is nothing compared to the persecution and the difficulty that the early church faced for years. I'm talking about centuries. Persecution, persecution that you would not be. But in spite of all of that, the church didn't fall apart like many Roman emperors and other folks, worldly folks predicted. The church not only persevered and came through, but the church got stronger. And, and don't you know that the church is the greatest force on the place of the earth today? If we were to stand up and live and commit the life that Christ has called us to, that the devil himself would kill us. What better place to start than in the church? What better place of service that you can remember that in the church? You see, what I love about servants in the church is that you don't have to be the preacher. That's right. Say you that. don't have to be a deacon. Yeah. We love to have you in any capacity, but you, you don't have to be the preacher. You don't have to be the deacon. Yeah. You don't have to be in the choir. Yeah. You don't have to be everything. Yeah. You, you can be a tithing. You can be an encourager. Yeah. You, you can be just a member who's right. faithful. That's you right. can be an usher. That's right. There's so many places of yeah. service where you can serve yeah. if you're serious. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Because some people, you know, we just want to be out front. That's right. We like to be out front. That's right. That's right. I'm saying we all look already like that or not, but that's what we are. <laughs> there are others who just serve for the sake of service. Serve sure, because they know that Christ it's good to us. And sir, because we know that one day that serving the Lord will pay out of the world. That's the thing that they, they took around and out here. But serving the Lord will pay out of the world and pay out for all time. So keep on serving. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. And when hell is ready, yeah. he promised he'd pay. Yeah. Stay in the church. Yeah. Serve in the church. You may not be in a position where you are so visible. 
when your service is from the heart, That's when your right. service is, is sincere, yeah. and you may not be that visible in the service, yeah. but when God looks down and takes yeah. over what's going on in the church, yeah. you're valuable to him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Be valuable to God's work. Yeah. It's just visible to people. Yeah. That's the important yeah. thing to remember is that whatever we do in the service of the Lord is not in vain. Right. Even the smallest thing, smallest word of encouragement, smallest prayer yeah. for the sick, smallest that you give, yeah. whatever you do in the service of the Lord is not in vain. Yeah. Because I heard the hymn writer say, if when you give the best of your service, yeah. tell them the world that the Savior yeah. is called, yeah. be not dismayed when men don't believe you. Yeah. See, they might not understand. But he'll understand. Yes, he will. And he'll say, yes. Well done. Yes, well. well, that's all right to have. Yes. People say, Amen. But when it's all said and done, I want to hear the Lord say, Well done. Yes. My good, that good and yes. faithful servant. Yes. You've been faithful yes. over a few things. Yes. Come on up and higher. Yes. I'm going to make you ruler yes. over me. Yes. What do you do? Yes, he will. And so when it really comes yes. down to service, if we really think about it, what little service that we can do for the Lord that can't compare with what he's already done for each one of us. It, it, it's not even close. You see, salvation is a done deal. It, it's already been accomplished. Jesus has already died. Yes, he's already died on the cross of Calvary. He's already been buried in Joseph Margaret too. He's already rose from the grave. He has already secured our salvation. And not only that, but Jesus has already opened doors for me. What has he done for you? He's already made a way for me. He's already given me and you good things that we get by the And it's been good to you. He's already done so much for us. So you can say, if he doesn't do anything, yeah. 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 he's already done enough. Yeah. When he woke me up this morning, yeah. he's already done enough. When he started me on my way, yeah. he's already done enough. Yeah. When he put food on my table, yeah. he's already done enough. Yeah. When he put clothes on my back, yeah. he's already done enough. When he put shoes on my feet, he's already yeah. done enough. When he kept coughing when he did it, he's already done enough. Yeah, because 
want to just find Jesus for yourself. Just yes. stop by one Sunday and yes. see for yourself there. Yes. Not only is this a church or place of service, but when you serve yes. us the best that you can, uh, serving in the church will give you satisfaction. Yes.
will be raised. Yes, we will. Likewise, yes. we know that our labor, that means work. That's right. That means we didn't just come to church and did a little something. Yes, we right. know that, that our labor is not in vain. Yes. In the law. Yes. For every good thing that's right. that you do. Yeah. For others in this down here. Yes. Yeah. God will. Yes, he will. Bless your father. Yes, he will. Get in turn to Yes, he will. Can I get a witness? Yes. Oh, what we ought to do? Yes. My brothers and sisters. Yes. My advice to you, my advice to you is yes. pray on. Yes. Work on. Yes. Serve on. Yes. Even if you have to suffer uh, yes. for a little while. Uh, yes. Just remember uh, yes. that the Bible says. Yes. Uh, God yeah. has given us yeah. the victory yes, through our Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I know I'm right about it. Yeah. I can see in the mind yeah. the hymn writer when he said, Alas, and did yeah. my Savior bleed, yeah. and did yeah. my sovereign yeah.
church uh, to continue the work uh, that he started uh, when he walked around uh, among men uh, but when he stood uh, up on the mountain uh, and ascended uh, in the heaven uh, he told the apostle uh, just go over uh, to the upper room uh, and stay there uh, till the power uh, come down uh,
is God's only begotten son. Yes. Born of the Virgin Mary. Yes. Died on the cross at Calvary. Was buried in a barber tomb. Yes. And was raised yes, he did. from the dead. Thank you, Lord. And he's ascended into heaven. Yes. And he lives forevermore. Thank you, Lord. He's calling each of us now yes. unto himself. Yes. We all need him. Yes. He will save you yes, will. if you come to him. Yes. Just like you are. Yes. He'll clean up anything. Yes. He'll clean it up for you. Yes. Bring all your problems. Yes. Bring all your burdens. Yes. Bring all your cares. Because Peter said, cast your cares yes. upon him. Yes. Because he cares yes. for you. Yes. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. And God bless you to keep you until we meet again. Amen. Amen. Until then, just a little bit of my testimony. Down through the years, I know the Lord's been good.